Good morning and welcome to episode 20 of the Duck Chronicles. As you can see, our little ducks are out again. Um, they've muddied up the pool since I've cleaned it out, but it's probably still clear enough you can see how I have it set up for them to get out. I have a very low cinder block and then a like a half height cinder block set up like a step there for them. You probably see it there too. Then one big block. One thing with uh, little ducks, when you start letting them get in a kiddie pool and they're still this small, you do have to pay attention to them. You can't really ignore them uh, because they can get stuck. I've had one that's twice gotten stuck kind of right in that little corner there, too dumb to use the center blocks. And uh, instead of helping her out, what I did was help her to the center block so she'd learn. Uh, so you do have to keep, believe it or not, a duck can drown, especially at this age. So you got to kind of keep an eye on them for that. And got them little steps in as well. Anyway, uh, I did want to let you know we decided that we would weigh the ducks today. And I just weighed four of them because, again, I I've really worked hard to build trust with them. And they don't like to be picked up. So uh, picking four of them up, they probably do pretty well. As you can see, I can get really close before they even think about getting up and moving at this point. And uh, that's what I want. I want trust with my birds. I want them just afraid enough that I can move them when I want to move them. Uh, but pretty much I want to be able to, to just walk right amongst them like this. So what kind of growth do we get? Again, it's only a four duck average, but on the 7th, they were 8.97 ounces. Today, February 14th, Valentine's Day, seven days later, they're 18.25. They put on about 10 ounces of duck. Uh, in seven days, more than doubling their body weight in that period of time. We can now actually give their weight in pounds. They're 1.14 pounds. So that's uh, pretty impressive for a little girl to grow that fast, isn't it there, honey? Yeah. Yeah. I've had people ask about when they see their feet in odd positions, like you can see how that one's is there, and maybe that one there that's, that's cleaning herself. Um, they just seem to like to lay that way. They're not in any pain or distress. Sometimes they'll lay with their leg kind of just straight out behind them. It's just what they do. There's one there. I think like that girl there, what she's doing, she's exposing her leg and her butt to the sun and sitting there thermoregulating like a lizard. Uh, anyway, um, I also want to let you know our adult flock um, being moved on the paddocks and getting them uh, more nutrition by putting them where they need to be rather than where they want to be. Seems to have worked a lot already. We've been getting uh, 10, 11 eggs, maybe, if we're lucky, a day. Uh, today's egg count went up to 18. So longer days are helping, too. But I think getting them out and moving and getting them onto the grass that we want them on uh, is helping a lot. Um, on the timing of moving from paddock to paddock, I want you guys to realize there's a couple things at play. One, there is kind of like a, a, a basic idea of doing it every two weeks. Uh, but again, we adjust that based on what we're seeing and really what you have to do whenever you're feeding anything on grass and ducks do eat a lot of the grass and the broadleaf weeds. If that grass starts to get high enough that it starts to get woody, they're not going to want it. They want young, lush shoots. So if you start to get the grass too high, you're going to end up having to cut it for them if you don't get them onto it quick enough for them to, uh, to browse what they want and to push the woody stuff down. They call that litter in the grazing industry. I also want to talk a little bit more about dogs. I did an adjunctive video with, Char adjunctive video with Charlie yesterday. Um, I think a lot of people seem to be, come here, Charlie. Come here, buddy. Really impressed with the way he is with the birds. But again, it's all about understanding basic commands and then working with them. I do want to say this. I've heard the whole, you know, tie a dead bird to their collar and or beat them with it and all. And I find that to be unnecessary and abusive. I understand where that came from. Um... But we have different technologies and different knowledge today, and, and it's not necessary. And some people ask, well, isn't the fact that we used an electronic training collar with him uh, kind of harsh and abusive? Actually, it was the least abusive thing we could do because we bought a collar that you can slowly turn up the, uh, the voltage, and we turned it up and uh, to a very low setting, and we used it, and it had no reaction. So we went up two or three more points. And we did it again, and you know this thing will go up to like 150 on settings or something like that, and his number is 32. So we went to the 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 minimum amount of of corrective uh, voltage that would get a reaction from him, and he experienced it twice in his life. And now when we do training with him and he's uh, not cooperating, we'll put that collar on him, and, and the only thing he gets is a vibrate just to kind of remind him. You can see that's a good boy, buddy. Leave him be. Good dog. Good dog. And uh, 
you know, that's how we've worked with him to where he can help us move birds. And again, I'll try to get an adjunct for you when I'm uh, just out working with him and I have my phone with me because I don't encourage that behavior unless there's a reason for it when I need birds moved. Um, but the electronic collar is, is, is the most simple way to train a dog and to get his attention and you don't really need to do much after that. In fact, we now can put the collar on him when we need a training session when he's being a little obstinate. We don't even need to vibrate him. We can show him the remote. And he's like, oh yeah, that's right. I'm supposed to listen, right buddy? Right, Charles? Okay. So, you know, work with your dogs, guys. I've had a lot of people post things like, my dog doesn't listen. Uh, I've never really been able to train my dog. Work with them. It's not hard. And there's no such thing as a dog too old to learn basic commands. Mythbusters prove that. Also, I want to let you know, cold weather is coming. Uh, but we should be fine. Uh, the weather guesser had said that we were expecting lows as Charlie runs into the, the new fence and he can't get up there to uh, to bark at the neighbor's dog anymore. Uh, but uh, down into the mid to low 20s. But the forecast revised up this morning said low 30s. I don't believe that. I believe we'll be down in the 20s. They never seem to be right here. The other night they said it was 37 degrees for our overnight low. And I had ice on all my stock tanks and all my faucets were frozen shut. Uh, this one over here that I'm going to take you over to and show you something in a minute with, I had to defrost it with a torch. Last time I checked my science books, kitties, water did not freeze at 37 degrees. It has to go below 32. So they were off by at least, you know, six, seven, eight degrees there for as much ice as we had. Uh, next up, the monoprice zip ties I've recommended on, zip, uh, on Amazon. Somebody posted on the Survival Podcast blog where I also post these videos, that um, you can uh, get them from Monopice directly for like two bucks instead of six something. Except the shipping's a lot higher than if you're on Amazon with Prime. But if you're buying more than two packs, you're going to come ahead. And the more you buy after that, the more you'll come ahead. Here's what I found, though. Uh, I buy six-inch ones from Amazon um, because that's what they had in stock at Amazon. They have eight and 11-inch ones from Monoprice that are very affordable. And they're probably more usable that way with a little bit more length. They had four inch ones that looked too small and too flimsy for anything on the homestead. But, um, you know, that means you can just get the bigger ones. And uh, I wouldn't go any lighter than the six inch ones with a 40 pound uh, resistance on them. Anyway, uh, it's up to you whether you buy them from Amazon or buy them from Monoprice. But I'll put a link to Monoprice that makes them. And uh, the only thing I'll tell you is, you know, you don't know what kind of shipping speed you're going to get when you buy them from someplace like that. With Amazon Prime, you know you get them, a, you know, a, two days later. Anyway, uh, one little thing I was going to do, this is an adjunct, and I figured, no, i go ahead and work it in today. I had talked about these bigger kiddie pools, you know, and water weighs 8.3 pounds a gallon or something like that. That pool was probably holding 200 gallons of water. Um... <laughs> <laughs> let's say it was a hundred gallons and let's let, maybe that's what it is maybe it's a hundred gallons it's 800 pounds uh last time i checked i wasn't good at lifting 800 pounds of sloshing water and it's definitely more than than a hundred gallons in that pool just based on how long they take to fill up so with that being the case when i want to get water out of here some of you guys have suggested you know putting drains in and i said we just use a siphon what i'm about to do actually i've done more than i usually do because i only have one hand because i'm using the phone but you can see I have a leader hose already run, and it's right where I want to put the water. This is a contour-based little miniature food forest orchard type arrangement that we have here. And uh, that means these paths are dead level, and it goes downgrade that way. And all water and nutrient that soaks in seeps through this. This is, a, this is actually a hoogle system. All of these little mounds have... Uh, tons of uh, cut up live oak that we tr trimmed out when we moved in underneath them. This is a pretty uh, advanced system even though it looks simple. But that means that I can put any water nutrient anywhere I want in these paths. So when I move this pool, I can move where I dump nutrient. Well today I'm going to dump the nutrient right there. And all you got to do to run a siphon, we should be teaching this to kids in school I think, is I'm going to go ahead and run some water through that hose Usually I just turn the hose on and hold them together with my hands for a couple seconds. But I'm going to point it at the pool when I do because you're going to see something happen here. It won't be that impressive, but most of you will be switched on to what... Up. Ah. Okay, I'm going to have to do it. <laughs> I had it so loose that it came loose on me. So I'm going to have to do this by hand. Anyway, there's air coming out of the hose now. And we'll run a little bit of water through here. 
and then just let go of it. And there goes the water coming out. So let me go shut this off. That's normally what I do anyway, is I just use, I just hold this end of the hose to that end of the hose and run a little bit of water through it. And now you can see the water's just running out of there. And it's running nice and slow so it'll seep in. And what I can do while all that fertigated water's seeping in, is when it's really wet there, I can move the hose over there a little bit, maybe move it on the other side of this stump and spread that out. And it's gonna naturally spread out anyway because of the contour design here. But it'll take it down, there's only a few inches of water in there. I'll just pick it up and dump it. And that's a lot easier than trying to patch and piece together some kind of uh, uh, a plug drain for it, where it's gonna drain a lot faster and do a lot more erosion. You can see the speed that comes out with. And you, as long as you're not trying to go uphill, you can pretty much use any length of hose you want. You can put that water anywhere. Um, yeah, I wanna move it, okay. As long as I don't bring it up too high and break the siphon, which it didn't do, um, it'll just keep running. That's just way easier, guys. We'll catch up with another episode soon.